Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a group of insane updates that have been released by the Yuzu emulator team in the last two to three days alone. Now, if I told you that all of the progress I'm going to be showing off in this video was from six months of work, you would be equally impressed. But to see these kind of changes in two days is absolutely ridiculous. This video is going to be split into four parts. We're going to be taking a look at improved game compatibility, improved performance, improved graphical output, and finally, we're going to be taking a look at a crazy improvement to the audio backend on this emulator. First up, game compatibility improvements, and if I haven't made it obvious enough yet, Pokemon Sword and Shield's softlocks have now been completely fixed, meaning that not only is this game practically perfectly rendered, but is also now fully playable on Yuzu. On the very latest early access testing builds, every single issue this game previously had has now been fixed. These issues include soft locking at cutscenes, soft locking when calling your bike near a wall or while on a ladder, walking in tall grass, soft locking when visiting a hair salon to change your hairstyle, and on top of this, incorrect animation looping has now also been completely solved. Now, any sane person would take a look at those updates and say, yeah, I've done a good day's work today. However, as we all know, the Yuzu development team are absolutely insane. So on top of all of these changes, these dudes have given us a huge performance boost in Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee, and dozens of other games on the emulator. On Pokemon Sword alone, the improvement in performance is between 10 to 15 frames per second. This performance was captured on the OpenGL rendering API. Now, at this point, you would usually sit back and say, okay, now we've done a really good job, the game's running, it has really great performance, but no, as usual, the Yuzu dev team didn't stop there. On top of these performance improvements on OpenGL, they've also given us a huge performance bump using the Vulkan API. Not content with giving us 25% better performance on OpenGL, the Yuzu team have given us between a 50 to 100% performance improvement on Vulkan also. Again, not content with those performance improvements and improvements to game compatibility in general, they have also now fixed the majority of the performance issues with Animal Crossing and New Horizons, meaning that for the most part, Animal Crossing is now playable on both OpenGL and Vulkan on Yuzu. Animal Crossing itself is now playable on the free mainline versions and to make things even better we now also have a mod that completely removes all the broken depth of field making this game very very close to being perfectly rendered. You can expect these OpenGL and Vulkan performance improvements to be merged to this mainline version in the coming days. So. At the start of this video, I said that we've been given so many crazy updates that if you saw this in six months, you would be equally as impressed. To continue this trend of crazy new updates, let's take a quick look at the rendering in Super Smash Bros Ultimate, which, if you weren't already aware, is now playable on Yuzu also. So this is what the game used to look like two days ago, and this is what it looks like now. Thankfully, in the latest Yuzu EA test builds, they have completely fixed all of the bright shader issues, making Super Smash Bros Ultimate infinitely more playable on the emulator. We do still have issues with character model rendering on Smash Updates Past 3.1.0, but I have absolutely no doubt that the Yuzu devs are going to have this issue figured out in absolutely no time at all. Moving on to yet another fan favourite game. Fire Emblem Three Houses has seen a huge improvement to its graphical rendering, with its broken depth bloom now completely fixed on the latest early access builds. Fire Emblem Three Houses has also seen a huge improvement to its audio rendering, but before we take a look at that, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Thanks to improvements to emulated GPU accuracy, any and all of the whitewater issues in this title have now been completely fixed, as well as much of the flickering or broken particles in gameplay. Super Mario Odyssey has also seen the benefits of these improvements to GPU accuracy, where now in areas like Cap and Metro Kingdom, smoke, fog and other particle effects are now also correctly being rendered. 
Again, thanks to improvements to GPU accuracy, Splatoon 2 now has correctly working ink interaction physics when used with asynchronous GPU emulation. What this means for you, the user, is that you can expect much, much greater performance levels paired with working game mechanics in this title. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the changes to a game compatibility, all of the major rendering updates, and all of the performance improvements, we're now going to take a look at yet another key area for any emulator. We're going to take a look at some unbelievable improvements to the audio renderer within Yuzu. To demonstrate some of these changes, we're first going to take a quick listen to Diablo 3's audio before these audio changes were applied. And now, this is what it sounds like in the latest early access versions. Quite the improvement, I think we can all agree. However, that audio change is nothing compared to the next one. As I said earlier, Fire Emblem Three Houses has seen a huge change in regards its audio rendering on Yuzu. Again, let's take a quick listen to how it used to sound. Okay, I think that's about enough of that. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like now. These improvements to audio rendering paired with the huge upgrade we've just been given to the game's visuals bring it even closer to playable and considering all of the previously shown changes, I think we all have to agree that those are some pretty insane updates we've gotten in the last two days. As always, I will continue to cover all of the latest and greatest updates from this emulator and many others, so as always, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy these kinds of videos. For anybody that is interested, I will also be releasing my HD retexture mod for Pokemon Sword and Shield in the next two or three days. Again, make sure to keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that mod and videos release. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I very much so appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.